Good morning, good morning, good morning. And welcome to Hope United Church of Christ in Moline on this May 1st, May Day. Uh, we are so glad you are here with us here in the sanctuary joining us and joining us online from many different places and spaces. We are glad you're here. If you're joining us online, make sure you let us know you're here. Please let us know how we can pray for you and support you and join you in this journey, this spiritual journey uh, from a distance, virtually. And today is the first Sunday of the month. It's kind of funny to have that for, fall on the first day of the month, too, but we will be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion together, and we do celebrate an open table at Hope UCC. So all of you who are here in the sanctuary, please make sure you have taken your elements from the back table, and we have the gluten-free wafers as well. And all who are joining us online, please make sure you have your elements to be able to join us at our table from where you are, the sanctuary of your home, and where you are, the space you are within, uh, worshiping within today. Um, newsletter, the May newsletter has been uh, published and there was a mistake on one of the dates, sorry about that. Real Theology is the third Friday of the month and in my haste I looked at my calendar too quickly. I wrote the 19th but it's the 20th and we'll be watching Belfast and discussing Belfast together. So that is the third Friday of the month. Uh, youth group, we will be meeting today, uh, 3 o'clock, and um, also thank you, Hope UCC, for the week off, my vacation last week. It was really nice to sleep a lot and take a couple little trips within the state, and um, the only problem with taking a Sunday off is then I don't get to hear... Um, my beloved colleagues preach and lead worship and so thank you for warmly inviting carol and dana uh, into church last sunday and i know that they always enjoy their time here and i know how much carol uh, really enjoys preaching and leading worship with you all uh, any other announcements i'm forgetting okay well uh today on this third sunday of easter we are still in the easter season easter is not a one day event in our lives of faith it is a continuing part of our journey every sunday is a little easter as they say but the easter season uh, culminates on pentecost sunday but uh you know, we still see the glorious bright white and gold decorations that Mary so beautifully and wonderfully created. Uh, they remind us that we're in this time of holding the good news right in front of us. Um, you know, and as I said, we do this all year long, but in this season, we study just that much more closely how the risen Christ how these appearances of the risen Christ changed the way his followers moved and lived each day and the way they just existed in the world and carried forth his message. So we ask ourselves, how is the risen Christ changing us? Our time together today we will, in this time together today, we'll focus on um, a few texts that reveal how God's Spirit will move us in uh, very surprising ways and how God's Spirit reminds us and shows us and clearly demonstrates for us that change is possible and that God continue to, continues to surprise us. So that is something to celebrate, isn't it? As we together are here today and we let our trust overflow, our trust in God's spirit, our trust in God just overflow. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it and come, let us worship. Good morning. Would all who were able please rise and join with me in the call to worship. Sing praises to God, O you saints of God. Give thanks to God's holy name. Praise God for the joyous day, new day. Thank God for healing and ever-present help. 
Extol the one who lifts us up from defeat. Praise the one who upholds us when we are discouraged. God seeks and hears our weeping. God lifts our souls from the Give thanks to God who turns mourning into dancing. Praise God who hears our cries and answers our prayers. Glad to you among We believe you are working to make us whole. praise and our worship as we join together and invite God into our midst with our opening prayer of invocation. Come to us as a light from heaven, sovereign God. Pierce the shadows of doubt and despair, anger and scorn that we allow to rule in our lives. Turn us from ways that deny your rule among us. Awaken us from dull routines to worship that is alive with awe and wonder, spontaneity and joy. Surprise us with a presence we cannot avoid, a summons we dare not evade, a mission we may not escape. We are gathered by the love of Christ that we may feed others as we have been fed. Amen. Well, I think at Hope UCC, we definitely have the spontaneity of the spirit down. And I love that about this congregation and this community. And let us open our hearts just that much further to make ourselves vulnerable to God's healing love as we first in silence offer our confession to God. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Loving God, we admit to attitudes that exclude rather than embrace. We prefer to associate with others who think and act as we do. We turn away from those who are different from us. We identify some as enemies to be avoided or even destroyed. 
Forgive us, God, for seeking to limit your family. Awaken us to the limits of our understanding and the narrowness of our dealings. Show us the better ways you intend and make us bold to respond. In Jesus' name, amen. As we offer our confession to God, God's healing love, God's healing love embraces us. We have all shed tears because of what has been done to us or what we have done to others. In those tears, we realize the hurt that is part of life. And yet those tears are brushed away and we are embraced in God's healing love because that, that is an assurance that God gives us as we walk on this journey. God's bountiful, unconditional, healing, merciful love. Be assured of God's forgiveness. Be assured of God's love. Be assured of the renewal of the baptismal promise of being God's beloved child. May the peace of our Lord be with you all. Also with you. Please share that peace with one another. Peace be with you. May the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, you are with us always. The psalmist, the psalmist knows that and has taught us and we sing the words together. We praise you and we give thanks to your holy name because Lord, when we have cried to you for help. You have healed us. You have held us. You have led us and you have strengthened us in our journeys as followers of your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. And today, as we gather as your people and lift our prayers to you, we lift them with the assurance and knowing that as your beloved, Children, we, we lift these to one who hears us and one who, who knows with each beating of our heart, each tear we shed, each laugh that we exude, that you are with us. Today, Lord, we hold and ask your abundant blessings be known and felt by the family and friends of Denny Anderson as he as they prepare to celebrate his life we pray for Nancy and Dan and Bev and Dorothy and Jenny and so many others we pray lord that you will hold them in their grief and as they share stories and memories today that they remember your promise a promise Denny so so deeply believed in of eternal life with you. Lord, we ask your healing blessings on Lee as she continues to recover and strengthen and on Jerry who misses her at home. We pray for a sustained recovery for Lee so that they may just enjoy that beautiful life they share together in their home. We pray your continued healing blessings on Marsha, that she continues to strengthen and heal, and that her, all of her goals are achieved as they are set by her caregivers and herself. And we pray today, Lord, for our brothers and sisters and siblings in the United Methodist Church, because today they find themselves divided once again. And we pray, Lord, that those who are hurt by church that they find a place to be and to heal and to find you, Lord, under all that mess that we put on you. 
We pray for all students and teachers of all grade levels as they prepare for finals and the ending of the school year. And for some of these students and teachers and caregivers, this will complete their academic journeys. And for those who are continuing on as well, we pray. After three years of all the how do we do this and what ifs, Lord, we just thank you that 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 we are able to still go to school and have places to be and learn and grow. We pray, Lord, that you will bless the students and teachers and let them find success and recognition of all of their achievements. Sometimes that achievement is just means showing up, but that they, they feel success, Lord. We pray today too, Lord, for all of the refugees and victims of war and violence and aggression. We pray for those who are able to escape these, these scary, violent places, and we pray for those who must remain in the dangerous and violent spaces. We pray for strength and hope and open hearts that will welcome them and comfort them and help to bring resolutions and an end to the suffering in so many of these areas, so many of these countries and regions. We pray for peace, Lord, the peace that we see embodied in your son, Jesus, the Prince of Peace. And we pray now, Lord, we lift to you the names of those we hold in prayer. and loving God for the names we lift to you with our voices, the names that we type into the comments, the names that we lift to you in the silence of our hearts. We thank you for hearing our prayers, Lord, for knowing our prayers before we speak them ourselves. And most of all, Lord, we thank you for the one you sent, your son, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Hebrew scripture lesson today is Psalm 30. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought me up, my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those who had gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O ye has his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. But your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell you of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. The New Testament lesson comes from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 20. 
Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now he was going along the road approaching Damascus. Suddenly a light from heaven flashed about him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man and how much evil he was done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has the authority from the chief priest to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of the name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, he has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he became, began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, he is the Son of God. The gospel lesson today comes from the book of John, chapter two, 21, verses 1 through 19. Would all who are able please rise and hear what the gospel is saying to the church. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. He gathered there together with Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Canaan and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of the disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. Then he went out and got in the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were, able, and now they were not able to haul it in because of there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. 
When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of God, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not want to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. You may be seated. Thank you, Bob. I offered to add one more reading for Bob this morning. And he, uh, he, he thought three was enough. I also, before I start, I want to apologize. I misspoke in our prayers. I, I saw uh, Denny and John Anderson, and when I was praying for Denny, I said Denny Anderson I, instead of Denny Armstrong. I apologize for that. I, I don't know who Denny Anderson is, but I, I hope he's doing well, and we pray for <laughs> Denny Armstrong's family and dear friends. Uh, I apologies. My, my, my apologies for that. Many years ago, uh, back in San Diego, I started seeing a spiritual director, and um, Paula, I loved meeting with her every month, she offered a description of all things God as holy mystery. And I, I thought, oh, I like that. You know, those unexplainable, head-scratching things about God and God's love, that, that's holy mystery. And I, I find myself falling back on that description uh, a lot. I, I think it is a perfect way to describe faith and God's activity in our lives and God's activity in this world. It's holy mystery. We have so many questions, and yet we have to accept we will never really have the empirical, tangible proof or the answers to our questions. Faith and um, faith just calls us to hold the unanswerable things, the mystery of our faith, to hold those things as holy. So our faith develops as a sacred trust that leads us into new paths on our spiritual and faith journeys. There's so much about faith that is a mystery. It feels a little uncertain sometimes, but one thing that is clear, one thing that is certain, it's not, I mean, there's still mysterious, but something we know to be a fact is that life with God means that we will be changed. From the earliest stories in scripture throughout the final sentences of our canon of the holy bible we witness how god is changing the world and changing the people in the world god brings new life god brings us resurrection each of our texts today illustrate remarkable changes in the characters and the narrator the psalmist and saul Ananias and the disciples, Peter, each, each of these people are renewed and changed through God's love, and that is a love that comes to us through Jesus. These people are transformed through that holy mystery of God's love, and they move from places of fear, of violence and uncertainty into lives that really show what love is in action looks like. 
Today's gospel and the text from Acts are dramatic stories of transformation, but I want to focus on John's story, on John's text this morning, on the gospel of John. And I invite you to recall last week's text from John when the risen Christ visits the disciples in that locked room as they hide. Remember his words as they felt the wounds in his hands and his side. Remember he said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. He commissioned them. He said, go out into the world and share the word with the world. But as we see this morning, this is not what happens. Think about the setting of our story this morning from John's Gospel. Peter and the disciples are out fishing. Peter's naked, fishing naked. They have returned to what they were doing before Jesus calls them to be disciples. They went back to what they had been doing before they were called as disciples. Why? Why would they do this? And when you think about it, they weren't even doing it very well because they had caught nothing. And then they encounter the risen Christ, and once again, Jesus calls them into their ministry of discipleship. But it's not just the abundant catch of fish that renews their focus on their mission. It's Jesus' words to Peter that his call, his identity, is changed. His identity is actually resurrected. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. Second time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said it a third time. Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Follow me. So think, just think about the magnitude of what is happening here. Because Peter's last act before the death of his dear friend and teacher, his very last thing he did was to deny his own identity as a disciple of Jesus. And now the resurrected Christ finds him and the other disciples fishing instead of out sharing the good news. It's as though Peter is denying his identity as a disciple once again. And even so, even in that action, Peter is given this gift of renewal and transformation. Out of that murkiness of fear and the scarcity of empty nets, comes abundance and renewal and a new life. Because this is what love does. Love heals, love changes us, love renews and transforms us. But this is love in action because what Jesus offers Peter and to us today, it's a two-sided promise of love. It's two sides. One side is the promise of consolation, of assurance. We're promised that we are included in this new life. Each of us is invited to the table. No one is excluded. Even Saul, as we witnessed in the text from Acts, even Saul is brought and invited to the table. No one is left out. But the other side, The other side of the promise, that side is a challenge. Yes, we are included in the promise of resurrection, and we have work to do in that promise. Feed my sheep. Follow me. We live the resurrection promise by living lives of love in action. Brene Brown, I 
love her stuff. Uh, she's a popular scholar and author of several books on social interactions and development and personal and emotional growth. She's done research in these areas and has offered her definition of love based on her research. She writes, we cultivate love when we allow our most vulnerable and powerful selves to be deeply seen and known and when we honor the spiritual connection that grows from that offering with trust, respect, kindness, and affection. Love is not something we give or get, it is something we nurture and grow. Love is a connection that can only be cultivated between two people when it exists within each of them. We can only love others as much as we love ourselves. Shame, blame, disrespect, betrayal, and the withholding of affection damages the roots from which love grows. Love can only survive these injuries if they're acknowledged, healed, and are rare. Peter and the disciples in their encounter with the risen Christ, they remind us that each one of us shares in that love that God offers. That resurrection is both consoling and healing and challenging in its renewal and its promise. Now, if you know me, you know I'm a visual learner. I like to put images um, to ideas so it helps me remember them. It helps me kind of organize my thoughts. And especially when it comes to something that might fall into this holy mystery category. And when I think of the story of Peter and the disciples and of Saul and Ananias too, and the transformation and renewal they experience and our invitation to renewal and living into the challenge it offers, it offers, I, I feel like that can all be symbolized and um, visualized in the image of a water lily or a lotus flower. When we were in San Diego, Balboa Park was a very regular part of our weekend and weekday adventures. And there's this big reflecting pool out in front of the botanical house there. And it was filled with water lilies and ducks and, um, and koi fish. And it was, it's just, they're beautiful flowers. That's not one of them. That's the underneath part. <laughs> the lotus flower, it's, it's this delicate, clean, and beautiful flower. You'd never know, there you go. You'd never know that such a beautiful flower, what all it had to get through to get up to the top of the water to be visible to us in its beautiful form. And that's because its roots are down below in that murky soil and its, and its journey up to the top to break through the top of the water, the surface. Yeah, the murky, lots of stuff down there. But it, those roots, it rises up and then breaks the surface of the water that lotus flower, the water lily, traditionally represents purity and enlightenment and an opening of the heart. Just like the flower opens as it breaks the surface, it opens to the sunlight. I feel like it represents what our hearts do as they are open to that potential in our lives and all that this world holds for us and all that God calls us into as we listen to Jesus when he says, feed my sheep. The lotus flower, the water lily represents faithfulness because to stay above that murky water, great faith is required in each one of us. It's easy to sink down into that mire. But with an open heart and great faith, anything is possible. To look at these delicate petals of this flower, you'd never know how tough this little flower actually is. But here it is, it's open, it's welcoming, it's sharing its beauty with all of us. It's a sight to behold. Our work as disciples continues with faithfulness and love. 
And when we see the world through the eyes of love and with that heart, when we live with that heart of love, resurrection and transformation are made very real in this world. Amen. Who will carry the name of Christ into the marketplace? Who will try new ways of faithfulness? Our offerings involve all who give. They empower those who serve. They express our praise and thanksgiving, whole witnessing to the reign of love in our midst. Please join with me in the unison prayer of dedication. We bring offerings to feed your lambs and tend your sheep, gracious God. May these gifts extend love in the form of food, pure water, shelter, and acceptance. Let them provide outreach to the world and opportunities for growth within this congregation. Help, Help us, us focus, focus on what is important, that, that we, we may, may work together, together to, make to make a, a difference, difference in, in the, the world. world. Amen. Amen. May God be with you. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them. Holy God, we praise and bless you for creation and the gift of life and for your abiding love, which brings us close to you, the source of all blessing. 
We thank you for revealing your will for us in the giving of the law and in the preaching of the prophets. And we thank you especially that in the fullness of time you sent us Jesus, born of Mary, to live in our midst, to share in our suffering, and to accept the pain of death at the hands of those whom Jesus loved. We rejoice in a victory over the grave, that in a victory over the grave, you raised Christ with power to become sovereign in your realm. We celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to gather your church by which your work may be done in the world and through which we share the gift of eternal life. So with the faithful in every place and every time, we praise you with joy and we praise your holy name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And as we are gathered in this place, in this sanctuary, joined together online and in person, we remember and we relive that gathering, that last meal Jesus shared with his friends, the men and women who had journeyed with him along the way. And we join together at this table, at this holy sacrament. We join together not because we have to, but, but because we are invited, because we may. We come just as we are, gathered here at Hope UCC, here and online, uh, each of us holding our individual pieces of bread and our individual cups, yet they are bread and they are cup made common through the love and the spirit that joins us together. We are thankful, thankful to be invited to share this holy offering because through it, all may know that through Christ, God has come to us and shared our common lot and invited us to be part of the people of God, of God's new age. And we remember on that night of betrayal and desertion as Jesus that sat with his friends, that Jesus shared the bread and he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples, each one of them, with the words, take and eat, this is my body broken for you. Following the meal as he poured the cup and shared it with his friends. He shared the cup with the blessing, this is my blood spilled for you. Every time you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. And we pray. Holy and loving God, we ask that by your Holy Spirit, you consecrate these gifts of bread and cup. And we pray that as you bless this bread and this cup, that you bless us as we receive them at your table. And that in that blessing, we will be strengthened to offer you our faith and our praise, and that we will be united with Christ and with one another and that we will always be strengthened to continue to be faithful to you in all things. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. And it is through this bread, this bread that is broken for us, that we participate, each of us, in the body of Christ. And it is in this cup of blessing that each of us shares in the new life Jesus invites us into. This is an open table. All are invited to share in this holy meal, just as all were invited to share that meal with Jesus on that night. We accept these gifts in the spirit of joy and gratitude with which they are offered. And together, we take and eat this bread of life. And together we take and drink this cup of salvation. Together let us give thanks for these gifts of God that God has offered for God's people. 
We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Each week as we gather together, we remember just what a gift it is to be able to be here. Um, it was just a year ago we were still navigating these murky waters, and yet we have broken through the surface, and this is where we are. And no matter what comes next, we know that that sunlight, the light, the love that we have found at the surface sustains us and nourishes us and carries us forward. Our worship in this place has ended, but we go out into the world and we share the love, that renewing, transformative love of God that God has brought to us in the risen Christ and through God's Spirit. Rise and go where God directs. Your caring may be the answer to someone's prayer. We will extol our God in word and deed. We will reach out to our neighbors with love. Be alert. Be alert to the needs of people you meet. You may be God's chosen instrument of healing. We will praise God's faithfulness day by day. We will listen with compassion to those who suffer. Blessed are those who believe without seeing. Blessed are those who trust without proof. We will follow where God leads us. Blessing, honor, glory, and power be to God. Amen. And in the name of our Creator God, in the name of our Redeemer, Jesus the Christ, and through the power of our guide, the Holy Spirit, go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Amen. Thank you.